Hi, welcome to another video. So, I recently covered Project IDX, and I also showed how you can build some pretty good apps with it. Project IDX is great for sure. I mean, you get good previews, an Android emulator, and everything, which is actually pretty cool. I really enjoy using it, but it's not the only option. One place I really like to use is GitHub's Code Spaces. I mean, it's just super cool. You can easily go to any GitHub repo and create a code space with one click. And not only that, you can also select from a bunch of machine types, which means you can potentially run smaller LLMs on it, which I do sometimes. For example, this type of instance gives you about 16 GB of RAM, which is amazing to use. Plus, it's much faster than IDX. Yes, IDX can be slow at times. Like, it takes longer to install extensions, which is something you wouldn't want, and CodeSpaces helps with that. It's also free, although the free version has a rate limit of about 120 core hours per month. I've never been able to exceed this limit because it automatically pauses and resumes between sessions, which is pretty seamless, and I use this regularly. Anyway, one thing it lacks is the AI features that Project IDX has, like the chat and auto-completion features. If you have a Copilot subscription, you'll automatically get Copilot features in the code space, but as you know, I don't use Copilot. However, recently, while I was browsing through my GitHub, I found out that I have access to Copilot workspaces. It's under limited preview, and I had added myself to the waitlist when it launched about three months ago. I got access recently, and it's currently free if you're accepted into the preview. I don't even have a Copilot subscription, so I don't know why they accepted me. Anyway, I'll mainly show you how to configure code spaces with auto-completion from Supermaven and our coding agents like Ader and Klein. But after that, towards the end, I'll also show you how you can use Copilot workspaces in conjunction with code spaces to get some really good generations. So, let's get started. First, make sure you're signed in to your GitHub account. Now, there are two options to create a GitHub code space. One option is to go to any repo and create a code space from there. But if you create it from a repo, it will include the contents of the repo which isn't always what you want. However, if you're working on a specific repo, whether it's private or public, you can do that, and it'll be created with the repo's content. I mostly use this method since I sync stuff to GitHub regularly, and it makes editing super easy. But for this video, I'll create a code space using a template. To do that, just click the menu option here. Then go to the Code Spaces option. Click it, and it'll open this page. You'll see some templates here, basic templates and other options. But I prefer using the blank template because it works best for me. So, let's select that. Now, this will open up Code Spaces, and it's very fast to spin up, unlike Project IDX, which takes much longer. If we wait a bit, you'll see it's now open. So, that's super cool. Now, we can start using it. First, it doesn't have anything installed. It's just a plain VS code that you can use, and you have the terminal here as well. The shell isn't restricted either, unlike IDX, where you need to create a virtual environment and install something like Ader. Here, you can install it with one command, just like on your local computer. Anyway, the first thing we need is an autocomplete provider, because that's essential. For that, I use Supermaven, because it's free and works super well for me. To install it, just go to Extensions and search for Supermaven. Then, click to install. Once it's done, open it up, and it'll ask you to configure it. I use the free tier and recommend it because it works really well. Just select the free tier, enter your email, and it'll get started. Now, 
I don't use the chat interface here. I just use it for auto-completion. So, if we create a simple file and write some code, you'll see that auto-completion works really well. So, that's super cool. Now, we just need to install Klein and Ader. Let's start with Klein. Go to Extensions again and search for Klein. Once you find it, install it. Once installed, open it, and it'll ask how you want to configure it. It works best with Claude, and I switch models based on what I'm working on. You can also use DeepSeek if you're looking for a cheaper option without sacrificing much quality. For now, I'll configure it with the Gemini 1.5 Flash model because it's free, which is what I mostly use. So, let's configure that. Now that that's done, we can start using it. I'm not going to create anything complex right now, as I just want to demo it. If you'd like me to build something with this workflow, comment your idea and like the video. If we hit around 700 likes, I'll make a video where I build a fully working app with it. Also, I've recently uploaded some new videos in the members section, like the OpenAI Swarm tutorial. So, consider joining. It's only $5 and supports the channel. Anyway, for now, let's just create a simple to-do app. I'll give it this mock-up of how I want it to look, since Gemini is multimodal and still free. So, let's send that over. Okay, it's doing it now. Let's wait a bit. And it's done. Here's the code, but we can't run it because it's just a basic HTML file without a server. You wouldn't have this issue with something like any framework that uses a server, but for this, we'll need to install the live server extension. Once installed, you can right click on the file, choose the preview option, and it'll start the application on a port. You can click that link to view the app. You'll also see the Open Ports in the Ports tab and can click the link from there as well. As you can see, this is what it generated, and it looks great. It's very close to the mock-up I provided, so that's awesome. Now, many people also like using Ader because it's a more controllable coding agent, and I use it a lot too. To install Ader, go to the terminal and run the peep install Ader chat command. This will install Ader. You'll also need to export an environment variable for the API. If you're using OpenAI, export that. Or if you're using Anthropic, do that. I'm using Gemini, so I'll add that API key. Once done, we can start using it. Let's ask it to create a Minesweeper game. And it's doing that now. Let's wait a bit. and it's done. If we run it, you'll see it works great and looks really cool. So, that's how you can set up GitHub code spaces with AI to create some really amazing things. I think it's super cool and works really well. I use it a lot. Plus, it comes pre-configured with GitHub, which is really convenient. If you work on multiple projects, try to keep one code space and clone the repos inside it to avoid setting things up repeatedly. That's something to keep in mind. Now, let me also show you how you can use Copilot workspaces 
and how you can create things with it. You'll need access to it, and you can sign up for their waitlist to get access. It's free once you're in. I have access, so let me show you. It works well. To use it, you'll need a GitHub repo. Now, there are two ways to get into the Copilot workspace. One way is, if you have a raised issue in your GitHub repo, you can get into that and just ask Copilot to fix it. The second way is the one I use. So, you can just go to the repo, click the code button, and you'll see these options. Just click the Copilot option. Once you do that, you can give it a prompt, and it will execute that prompt and do the work. Let's ask it to make a simple to-do app, because I just want to demo it. If you guys want me to make a video where I create apps with it, just comment an idea and make sure to like the video. If we hit 700 likes, I'll make it. Anyway, once we send it, you'll see that it starts working on it. It first creates a plan, goes through each file one by one, and implements that plan. So, let's wait a bit. it's done. Here are the changes it's made. You can see these files here, and you can also see the plan. You can ask any questions or have it do more, which is also cool. Now, to preview this, you have two options. The first option is to create a pull request, go to the repo, and merge it, which is what most of you will want to do. I don't do pull requests, because I mostly work on personal repos. So, I use the push to main branch option. Then, you can pull the new changes to code spaces, or even your local machine, and preview them. This is the best option to use. But, you can also open it in a code space directly from here. And this will be the same code space where Copilot is editing the code. So, if you ask it to make any changes, they will automatically be reflected in that code space, which is great because you won't need to push and pull after every edit. So, let's do that now. Okay, it's opening. Let's wait a bit. And it's open. You can see the code it generated, and you can also see it's unstaged, which is why it has the green symbol here. Anyway, let's run it. Okay, this looks pretty good. It did what we asked. That's amazing. I think this workspace option is really good. Plus, it's fully free right now if you get through the waitlist. I can make more videos on it. So, that's how you can configure a really good remote AI development setup that's cool to use and works really well. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the join button also give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel i'll see you in the next video till then bye